Well, hello, and welcome to the Well After Hours. I'm your host, Beverly Allen. And today we are going to be talking about the growing blended family. And my special guest today has just written and launched her new book titled Beautifully Blended. I want to welcome back my returning guest, Mrs. Sanji Rondi. Sanji, thank you for coming back to the well. Hi. Hi. So glad to be back here. I'm so happy to be with you again, mother. Yeah. And you know what? It's, it's so different. I mean, you were here for something else the last time, but who knew that when you came back this time, we were going to have beholding this beautiful book. I just love it front to back. Um, and we're going to get into the nuggets of this, but I just want you to kind of like a little introduction of yourself to the viewers. Okay. So, right. The last time I was here, we were talking all about my insurance accolades, everything I had done in the insurance industry. I promised I would be back, but I never knew that I was coming back to come back as an author. Right. Right. So while I was away, (laughs) um, here I am writing books now. Right. And so um, it has been pressed upon my heart that uh I've gotten a prophecy that I was going to be writing not one, not two, not three, not four, but five books, (laughs) five in the midst of all that stuff. We talked about the last time with the insurance, who's going to find time to write a book, right? Mm -hmm. I put it off. I put it off. And I was like, yeah, soon, Lord, soon. (laughs) And so literally one day I'm in bed and um, it's like three o'clock in the morning and God's like, get up. Get up now and write. And I'm one that loves to journal. So I have journals like crazy. I journal everything, diary journal, whatever. But this was different. He's like, get up and journal. And not just so much journal, but I'm sleepy and I'm up and I'm like, (laughs) I got my eyes half closed. And I really didn't even know what it was I was writing, but I was obedient. And I started writing some stuff out. And then I go back to sleep. So I get up the next morning with full consciousness and I look and I see what it is that I've written and I realized that I had done somewhat of a family tree. And I was like, huh? <laughs> what is this? And so I go into prayer and I'm like, okay, Lord, what is this and where are we going with this? And it began to unfold that I was supposed to be doing something in regards to the family. And I'm like, okay, well, what, what exactly is that? And where, you know, where in the family dynamic am I supposed to look? So my my personal situation is that I've been married um, to a lovely man, and I'm sure we'll get into that, for quite some time now. And I, I'm a product of a blended family. So my mom's been married for, uh, she's been married three different times. And um, I got married and I don't have any children with my husband. And so this is something that, has been passed along in a way and you know i've seen people get together and not really raise their kids together in a way that was healthy and i've come from an unhealthy background and so it's always been upon my heart and the last time we talked when we were talking about my insurance background we talked about me going to harvard and one of the things that i had done while i was at harvard was looking to child protection and so that particular series of classes that I had taken was in regards to understanding child abuse, things of that nature, whatever. So all of this kind of ties in together, just understanding how your place as a an abused child fits with you as an adult. And I'm like, okay, Lord, where am I supposed to go with all of this information? So I just started to write. And that is where we ended up with the Beautifully Blended Family. But the charge was not just to write about the family and how you blend together, but it was a charge to look back on my childhood and not just my childhood, but look at where my parents were foundationally and their coming together and the decisions and choices that they made that created me, that therefore brought me forth and how I was laying out the foundation for my children too. Wow. Well, you know, that that is that is really something. There's nothing like being obedient okay. and being led by the spirit, you know. Amen. And, that is so true. Yeah. And, and and you know what? And this is such a relevant topic and subject because, you know, I looked up just some statistics and these are kind of old. This is from 2009 mm-hmm. where it says that um, uh, according to 
uh, Pew Research Center reports that a generalized look at blended families in the U.S. today for the purpose of better understanding the blended family structure. A blended family is defined as any household that includes a step-parent, step-sibling, or half-sibling. And it says 16% of children live in blended families. Per the U.S. Bureau of Census, 1,300 new step families are formed each day. This is every day now. 40% of families in the U.S. are blended with at least one parent having a child from a previous relationship before marriage. And the number of kids living in blended families has been stable for nearly 30 years. Children of Hispanic, Black, and white backgrounds are equally likely to live in this type of family. Children from Asian families are half as likely as Hispanic, Black, or white kids to be a part of a blended family. And six in 10 women's remarriages create blended families. So, I mean, and, and this is like, what, uh, from like about 2009, and wow. you could only multiply that how many times up to 2023. So, you know, it is a big topic and it's something that really needs to be spoken about, you know, because it's not easy and we'll get into that as we as we go on. But before we start about uh, the members of the blended family, it, we're going to start with you and Chris. Okay. <laughs> are you, are you met? Subject I love. <laughs> are you are met. <clears throat> how you all actually met. And the other part to that question is, and after meeting and making a de determination about your own relationship, how long did it take to introduce, you know, your, your children to one another, bring the siblings together to meet, you know, okay. one another. So you can take it from there. <laughs> uh, okay. So how we met was literally sort of divine intervention as well. Not sort of, it was actually very much divine intervention, um, which did not make it into the book. So this is a little bit of a bonus. Oh, <laughs> I just couldn't write everything, but everything, like I said, this book was spirit led. And so those that know me very well know the behind the scenes about how me and my husband actually met. Um, which is why if you get the book and read the book, you'll read some stuff and you'll know why we actually are still together. Um, because what God puts together, no one I'm on now. Okay. So I had been looking for a new job and um, I did not like the city of New York in terms of work, but I pursued employment in New York City because I wanted to get out of the state of New Jersey. And I got five job offers. One of them happened to be where Chris worked. And so I um, did not want that particular job out of all of them. It was the least attractive on paper. It was offering me the same exact money that I was making here in New Jersey. And it was the furthest one to travel to. And so um, senior pastor, Nicole B. Simpson, and I know she's going to be watching. Hi, <laughs> pastor. <laughs> um, she can she can test to this. When I got the five job offers, and this was way back in the day when they used to actually email or, you know, mail you the actual offer, I had all five of them laid out in front of me. And I'm like, okay, so which one should I accept? I call her uh, and I say to her, um, I don't know which one to take. And so she tells me to pray on it. That's always her thing, pray on it, right? <laughs> so I pray, I get up the next morning and very clearly, Mother Allen, the Lord says to me, Canon. And I say, mm, I'm sorry, I, I, I thought I heard you, Lord, say canon. <laughs> That's not where I wanted to go. It was, again, the least attractive. And canon? No, no, no. I think I might have misunderstood you. Really quickly, I call Pastor and I say, this is where I think he's telling me to go, but it's not where I want to go. What you, she goes, what are you going to do? Uh, I'm going to be obedient. I'm going to go to Canon. And I did. And I hated it. From the day I started, I hated it. Had the most miserable time. Never in my life have I ever been bullied. I was bullied at the job, but it's where I met my husband. It's the only good thing that came out of that job. <laughs> at the time, he had just lost his mom. And he was not looking for love or anything of the sort. But somehow in the midst of all of that, he still opened up his heart to me. I lasted there 
maybe just more than a year. And so I say, I was placed there for them, for him, and he found me. So wow. <laughs> divine intervention for sure, because I didn't even want to go there. But I had to be there in order for him to find me. And so that's how we made our connection, you know, because if I hadn't gone, if I wasn't obedient, and trust me, I really didn't want to go. Wow. Then I would have never met him in that time, at least. So I believe we probably would cross paths. I don't know how, but we were meant to be together. Once we got together, um, we were dating for, for quite some time and things moved between us very fast. Like we, we were closer than close, like instantly. I told him my entire past probably within the first couple of weeks. I felt that comfortable with him. Mm -hmm. And so I let him know everything about me. He mm -hmm. wasn't supposed to meet my daughter uh, until I felt really comfortable. He met her by accident. She'd come home from her dad's house early because she wasn't feeling well. It was her dad's weekend because we were no longer together and she was sick. And again, I had a couple of people at my house, had a little bit of a gathering. And so Tynese had come home early. She was four years old at the time. She'd never seen him before. I didn't have enough time to usher him and the other people out of the house so that they wouldn't cross paths. And so Tynese walks into the house and Nicole was there yet again. So this, this is all verifiable information. My daughter walks in, four years old. She sees this guy amongst other people she had never seen. She walks past everybody and walks up to him and says, uh, do you like my boots? <laughs> but she said it with like all of this sad. And he's looking like, uh, and he says, yes. And then she doesn't say anything else. She walks off, goes to her room and closes her door. We joke about that today because it was her way of saying, okay, you don't like my boots, sir. You got to go. Now, my daughter's a fashion stylist for those who are watching. And so for her, it was like, that was her affirmation. Say, if you don't like this, then you got to go and whatever. <laughs> so we ask her now, even today, like, how'd you know it was him? How did you know that was the one? Because there were other guys there. How did you know he was the one to walk up to? And she's like, I don't, I don't know. I just knew. I knew the way. And I was standing on the other side of the room. So it's not like we were standing together, like all oh, lovey dovey. I, I, once I knew she was coming home and I didn't have enough time to have them leave, I, I dispensed myself, you know, like quickly to get away from him because I didn't want her to well, think I was yeah, in yeah. situation. Yeah. But she knew. And so once she met him, then. I didn't bring him around in romantic ways after mm -hmm. that, but then mm -hmm. I was like, okay, she's already seen him. And then we brought his daughter to her birthday party. And wow. that's how we introduced him into her life. It was with his child who was also four years old at the time. So that's how that started to be. And then they became inseparable. The first day the two of them met, they held on to each other and cried like, cried cry 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 hysterical crying to leave each other so oh my it, it was it was instant bonding between the two girls and that's how we became very close as a unit before we even like officially started to do anything much so our girls really solidified our bond so it was his daughter and your daughter that's all there there his is youngest one the one that is the same age as her right okay so he has how many two Two and you have tinies one. It's tiny. That's the one. Oh my goodness, that is an awesome, awesome story. Um, now that you brought us up to <laughs> speed on that, I have to ask you: in writing this book, I mean, there was a after you know you 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 you're of course you're writing this book after you're past this this point. Um, but what made you decide at this time? you know, to write this book, what was the goal for you in writing this book? And for those in case who may just be tuning in, this is her book, Beautifully Blended. It is absolutely beautiful from cover to cover. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead, son. <laughs> yeah. um, just because the family as a whole has just been through a lot of turmoil, maybe not just my family as individual, uh, as an individual unit, but just trending wise. Um, notice that families have been in turmoil because I don't just talk about my family unit as husband, wife, and children, but sibling relationships have been severed. And um, 
In terms of the family unit as a core unit, this is something I want to point out very, very clearly because you brought up the statistics, which I think was very important. One thing I noticed post pandemic, right, or even during the pandemic was a lot of people were going back into the dating scene, right? And they're going back into the dating scene, but their concern was finding somebody that was equally matched to them. Mm. And it was like, well, I have children. Mm. And so how do I find someone who wants to be with me and I have children and maybe they don't. And so that's always in the back of your head, like, well, are they going to love my children in the same manner? you know, because they're not theirs. And so it's like, you'll be really hard pressed, especially, and I'm thinking of the age group that I'm in to find somebody starting over at, in your forties or fifties, who doesn't have kids at this point. It's, it's almost like I say nine out of 10 people at this point have children. So I'm thinking the blended family is probably the new family mm -hmm. of today. And so it's like, I didn't see much by way of article or, or, you know, series or anything that would help guide individuals into creating these beautiful families mm. where it's help. It's help. It's like you can still go and find a mate and come together and not look at it like a doom and gloom. If you make your mindset one where I'm going to love either their child or ask that they know that my child and I or we mm -hmm. are a package deal. And so those decisions and those conversations need to happen before you start to move towards a romantic, you know, um, combination because you're a unit. There should be no romantic he and I and the children are excluded if your ultimate goal is to have a family and a wedding and you know a forever after because forever after is not going to be a re reality if you leave the children out mm, and so, so I was I was really contemplating that in my head as well like you can't go date somebody freely and then think that your children are going to be an afterthought because you're already setting your marriage up to fail and then you're putting your children ultimately in danger because now you're introducing someone into their personal space that may not welcome them as much as they love you. Mm -hmm. And so you need to know all of that ahead of time before you get too serious about them and before they get too serious about you. And so that was the mindset behind it as well. Wow. Well, that is really, that is, that's to be noted. That's so important, you know, uh, beforehand. It's wonderful that, you know, you and Chris took the steps <laughs> beforehand to kind of solidify your relationship, you know, uh, before intentionally, you know, bringing them together because, you know, there's different dynamics in each family and, you know, it's bringing that, those dynamics together to see which ones work, you know, um, or integrating them so that they will work. So because children are sometimes, you know, exposed to certain traditions or certain habits or activities that now crossing over <laughs> with the other siblings, you know, how does that play a part? Were there um, some common or uncommon challenges that were faced in bringing the families together? Um, well, we had geographical challenges. <laughs> we had <laughs> some serious geographical challenges because we were all in different locations. Mm -hmm. And so, um, just finding the commonality in time was a big issue for us. And so you just said it. These are building blocks. Mm. And you got to start with that first foundation, right? So can we get along first is the issue. Mm. And then once we get along, as we're starting to build towards the ultimate top, which is marriage, which we weren't thinking about right away. I was clear about that. But if if that's the goal, then we start to bring the pieces in, which is the children, right? Mm -hmm. Can they get along too? Because that's yeah. that's important as well, right? Because yes. you may have one that says, Oh, you're taking away my mom, you're taking away my dad, you're doing whatever it is that you're doing. You have to make sure those pieces fit, mm -hmm. right? And then there's cross functionality in understanding, well, I like you, but I don't like her, and I don't like him, and I don't like this one. And so 
when you're concerned about timing together with all of you, how do we all function together mm. once we're all together? Because yeah. three of us may get along really good, but four of us may not. And what happens when all five of us are together? <laughs> you know, that was our biggest challenge. Oh when five of us get together, how do we look as a unit? How does that feel? Is the synergy good? Is the chemistry nice? Is everybody just putting on a front like I have to be here? Or is it like I want to be here? Because we're going to be a family. It, it should feel right. It should feel good. We should feel love. Or does it feel forced? Because he's the parent and I'm the parent. And we're telling you this is what you need to do versus this is something that you want to do. Mm. And so that's a key component in making sure that things work out is like, can you find the right balance of making sure what is necessary is also something that is wanted? Mm. So. Wow. That you just you you just said a mouthful with that one. <laughs> um, I feel like we were like a great case study because we had so much going on yeah. in trying to build our family. And then when hindsight in writing it was, well, we did it though, and it worked. So why can't I be the voice to help somebody else? Because the blueprint that we didn't even know we were writing was a successful blueprint. So it was hindsight. <laughs> And it's true. And, you know, experiences, one person's experience gives way to someone else's uh, understanding of maybe how to navigate through mm -hmm. some things. Maybe it's not exactly the same, you know, it could right. be, different, but there's something that they can pull. And there's also encouragement and hope <laughs> for people. Absolutely. <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely. It's like you don't give up. Because something doesn't work, which I've mentioned, you, you you pivot and you say, OK, so that didn't work. So what can we do to kind of tweak this and make sure that it fits for us in our particular unit? Right. And so where we saw that maybe um, the scheduling didn't work with me and Chinese and traveling over to where they were, they would make the accommodations and traveling over to where Chinese and I were. You know, so things just had to be shifted around a little bit so that it worked for everybody at different times. And, and then you just have to figure out what your family unit, whatever those issues or, or concerns, I don't want to call them issues always, but whatever those concerns may be, you just figure it out. But it's conversation, it's communication. You just don't just let it slide. You, you work it through. You sit down and you say, well, this doesn't exactly work. We're not seeing enough of each other as a collective or we're not working together to make sure that we're having enough face time as a unit. So how do we make this work? And we had to do that. Yeah. Wouldn't you say that people should not necessarily be uh, fearful about trial and error? Oh, of course not. Of course not, because guess what? It's it's going to happen. It's going to happen. It's how you process it and move forward that makes all of the difference. Because if you stay stuck and accept that to be just trial and error and say, well, you know what? We tried and that's it. Then you're going to stay stuck. And then you're not going to get any movement in it. And your family's not going to flourish. Yeah. It's not going to flourish. You know, um, like you said, as you go along, you know that it's and in fact, what doesn't work is teaching you something, too. And mm -hmm. and you can tweak it here and there. You know, maybe this may not work, but that may not work. And 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 bringing uh, your daughters uh, together. Uh, how did how did you get them to bond with one another or the whole family? And, and as a matter of fact, you know, like acceptance of you as a parent, <laughs> you know, and um and your daughter is him as a, as a stepfather, you know, another father since she had her father too. But, you know, how did, how did you find that? Well, with the girls first, um, the birthday party was the initial uh, contact between the two youngest. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the beautiful thing about little kids is that <laughs> they just see a new friend and it's instantaneous. And so I like said their first meeting, they were inseparable and it was hard to tear them apart. And then once they realized, oh, these two have something going on because they're both very bright, mm -hmm. they labeled themselves as sisters. We didn't do that. That was them. They were like, oh, we're sisters. 
And so then when the oldest one got it added into the mix, we started to do activities where it involved all of us. And then their mom, his daughter's mom, started to include Tynese into activities for her children so that me and Tynese could be integrated. This is how the family started to extend out. This is why I talk about the blended family, not just being the five of us, but then everybody's included. So I started to go to events that his children were in, like the youngest one was in a band. So I would go to some of the recitals, me and Tynese, and we would all six of us be sitting in a row, you know, and then her mom would be there. So I got to know their grandmother, you know, and then again, they would come over and sit with me and Tynese and be involved with my mother and, you know, spend time around my niece, Imani, and, you know, like around Nicole's kids and stuff like that. So we just were slowly expanding, you know, the mm -hmm. family unit and everyone was getting comfortable with one another. And it just kind of really happened fluidly. It was, no one was forcing anything. Everybody, it was like one event at a time, a birthday party, a barbecue, a music recital, you know, something here, something there. And every time something happened, it was, an invitation extended, you know, and so there was another new family member introduced. And so then it became auntie so-and-so and, you know, uncle this one. And so it just started to grow more and more and more. And before you know, it's like, okay, so here we are now. These are aunts and uncles and we're not even married, <laughs> but these are now the extended family members to these beautiful young girls. And they don't see any difference. I kind of feel like they forced us to get married at that point because everybody was identified as auntie and uncle. And it was like, well, we're together now. Yeah, like, we're, in it. Now. we're in it. We're in it now. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, yeah. You're we, all were. In. we were in it. You're all in at this point. Yeah. Oh, uh, well, that that made it a lot uh, easier and more comfortable, uh, you know, a situation for everyone once they, you know, and, and they grew their family dynamics grew. They had more people backing them up and, you know, so much more building. I mean, it was it's a beautiful uh, way that it turned out because there's other stories that may not have turned out that well as far as, you know, like the dynamics. And it has a lot to do with, you know, I guess us as women, like, you know, being able to put children first. That is the key. Always remember that the children come first. Always. Because when you can't carry your hurt feelings off of broken relationships, and so me and my ex, we're not the best of friends. I never pretend that we are. <laughs> but what we were, it, particularly in the earlier years, was cordial enough that my daughter never knew how intense our dislike behind the scenes was. <laughs> she didn't know until she became an adult how much drama there really was. Because as her parents and as the adults in the room, her job was not to figure out how we were trying to figure out how to act, right? Mm. And so what she saw was a very healthy engagement between the adults. Wow. And so my husband, her father, his ex, myself, we all operated in accordance to adult behavior because the one thing, and then her father's new girlfriend, her uh, his ex's new boyfriend. We all, what we had in common was the love for the kids. And that, I gotta say, was probably the difference maker in this particular blended family that you don't see in a lot. I know that that's uncommon. And I thank God that that is the one I landed in versus somebody else. Mm. For the six of us, our children always, always came first. We might have wanted to scratch each other's eyes out behind the scenes sometimes, <laughs> but they never saw it. They never saw it. Right. And we we really did for many years move in unity for the betterment of our children. And so they grew up with that utopia as they should. Their problems were kid problems. They were not our problems. And they should never have had to ever worry. And we did a really good job of shielding them from that. 
Wow. And you know what? Uh, let me ask you. So about now, how many years have you all been in on the blended family now? You've been it married? will be 22. Wow. Woo. You know, three almost now, I think. Oh, 23. My goodness. Yeah. Since 2000. Wow. Well, it's 23 years. My goodness. Yes. Oh, my goodness. You know, I, I'm, I'm just going to read a little bit from your book. I'm just pulling some things on, on page 89 under All in the Family, where it says you wrote um, one of the key ingredients to the success of our longevity is that we learn to trust and listen to one another. I must admit, in the beginning, I was one who had the true issue with the concept. But he would say a thing or two and I would hear him and I would continue doing what I thought was best. Can you elaborate a little bit on that? <laughs> so, yes, 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 yes. <laughs> My husband is the voice of reason. He really is. And I just I do. I think and bless God for him every day. Um, early on, uh, I, I was still <laughs> very young. And um, when he would give the sound advice as to how we should navigate our children in the best way, and uh, I'll use an example. So I, I was very sick in the early days, um, and I had to make the decision to let my daughter live with her father for several years because I was always afraid of her coming in and seeing me passed out on the floor or something to that effect, you know, and I would not share with her what was going on. Mm -hmm. Again, I thought utopia mm -hmm. beat honesty in, in some circumstances and I shielded her probably more than I should have. He was always the one that was like, they can handle a certain level of information mm -hmm. that was for the betterment of their growth and development. Mm. And so I was mama bear to a certain degree where it was like, no, we're not telling them anything. We're just going to do this this way and whatever. And so a lot of that decision making that I made, I realized hurt them in the long run because I didn't trust his instincts in understanding that they could have handled a lot more, all of them, and not just Chinese. Um, and I regret not really paying attention to what it was that he was trying to tell me, not only just as the head, but, you know, in, in trying to be a better um, listener to him. Mm. And so that, that, that is where <laughs> that is coming from. It's like, we, we've, learned and, and and it's more me being more submissive to that i always want to hear what he has to say and now i defer i'm like what, what okay how do you think we should handle this we we really do down to the commas denominator take a situation and break it down but back then i was like nope that's it i'm done <laughs> don't tell me I, this is going to protect the family and it wasn't always the best decision making no one should ever be making a unilateral decision when it affects the entire family and i was back then making unilateral decisions that were not always for the good of the family wow and that's not the way to go and and that's so important and uh, you know you give yourself some grace in areas because when you've had to make the decisions so long independently and everything is riding on you it's mm -hmm. hard to kind of let that go because you've always seen it as like you say the mama bear protecting the family because you had to you the head of the household at that time but now that you have another one and that's part of the process of building the relationship too you know um because it's different being in a relationship uh when you're not, if you're not living together. So, you know, once you, you, you come together and you're living under the same roof, it's, it's an adjustment. <laughs> it was a big one. That, and that's part of that trial and error. Yes, it is. And as I said, you, you have to make room to grow. Otherwise you will be stuck. Cause if I kept that same mindset, I don't know that we get to where we are now in the space that we're in now where, where things are really good. It's like, you know, he gets tired and be like, okay, you, you're going to do what you're going to do. And not, not say he wouldn't be here, but he's like, you're going to do what you're going to do. And so I'm not going to offer up my opinion or two cents, which is very much needed and very much valued. 
and very sound <laughs> at times because I think from the heart, he thinks from the head, you know? And so mm -hmm. we need that balance. Yeah. And yeah. and I didn't always leave room for it. So no, well, I had to learn. I well, had to that learn. I'm so glad you're sharing and being so transparent about it. And you got to get the book because there's so much more in there that is said that you really need to, uh, I think it will bless you <laughs> and help you to understand some things and give you encouragement and hope as well. Um, but at this point, I just want to take a little break so I can share some uh, some clips of the blended family so people can see just how blended <laughs> your family is. And don't go away. We're going to be right back. I just want to share uh, just this little clip that I think will be fun for you to see uh, Sonji's blended family. So don't go away. We'll be right back. Well, I know you all enjoyed seeing that video, that clip on uh, Sonji's blended family and see what a blessing it was and how beautiful and happy they look together. And, you know, Sonji, I, I wanted to go back to your book because um, under Family Matters, it said something really, I think, uh, important where there's so many important things that said in here, but I'm just pulling out another one, another jacket on page 157 under family matters. It says in the family dynamic, your place in the family matters. Everyone is vying for attention because they want to ensure that they are being seen and heard, whether it is the husband, the wife, for any of the kids, no one wants to get lost as a family gets to know each other. That is really so key uh, in, in blending, in a blended family. Everybody wants to be seen. Can you tell us just kind of how you navigated, you know, with that, how you and Chris did that? Well, it, it's so true, too. And so for I can speak about ours. When, when we got together, obviously, when it was just me and Chris and we were dating, we had time to just Google I mean, Google eyes at one another, right? So it's me, it's you, it's me, it's you, it's me, it's you, it's me, it's you, that's it. When we bring the kids into the mix, now we have three other people in this five-person circle, right? And so I, I need to focus on getting to know his kids. He needs to focus on getting to know Tiny's, right? And so everybody's like, well, look at me, pay attention to me, you know? And so as I'm getting to know his kids, Maybe he doesn't feel as much attention from me as he did in the beginning. And then maybe Ty's like, hey, what about me, Ma? You, you know, because it's me and her all day, every day, even today, right? Ty's going to make sure if she's in the room, everybody know that that's my kid, right? And so what I noticed was everybody was really kind of, I, I, I want to be seen. I want to be heard. I want to be noticed, except me. I'm the last one for that because everybody's coming for my attention. And I was like, I don't know if that's a mother thing or just a human thing. 
You know, I want to say probably a human thing, but mothers are one that are usually the nurturing ones. Yeah. And so everybody's coming to mom for the attention. Mm. And so I just know that everybody, you have to find that balance to mm. make sure that everybody gets that right amount of love and no one slips through the cracks. I don't care if I had Chinese 10 years before everybody else came into the picture. Chinese is going to get extra love because I need to make sure she knows she's still my girl. Mm. Obviously, I got with Chris, so I need to make sure that he knows every time he walks in the door, you're still my number one guy, right? And then with his children, those are my bonus girls. Yeah. I need to let them know I am so glad that y'all are here as well, and I love both of you as much as I love everybody else. But it was really a juggling act because then at the end of the day, I was like, oh. <laughs> I'm so exhausted with all of this outpour of love, but I love doing it. I love doing it. And so what, what, what you're doing when you're building your blended family is you're making sure you're checking in with everybody. Mm. And so it's so crazy because I think it was yesterday I was having a conversation with a friend and I was literally saying to them how I remember having individual dates with my nieces, with my niece and nephews. And I was like, so I guess I was built for this, like just making sure that everyone gets a little bit of attention from me. So I wasn't, it wasn't as hard as I'm making, I'm exaggerating a little bit, but just staying keyed in to each person is an important thing that you need to do because everybody's going to want to know that their place is solidified. Like, I don't want to be the one that no one sees or hears because now we have you know, all of these. Ty went from being the only child to being three, one amongst three, right? The other two, they had each other. Now they got to include a third sister into this dynamic. We went from just being the two of us to having three children running around, you know, can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? So everybody's place is important and everybody needs that love and that's all i was trying to say is that don't discount how anyone feels and even if somebody's sitting off to the side saying no 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 i'm fine they need that attention too mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they may just be trying to figure out where do i fit yes, in, in mm -hmm. and so make sure you assure them that you are just a vital just as much of a vital part of this family this blendedness as anybody else and yourself included hmm. yourself included like i knew who i was in it and so i just it's a circle it's a circle every piece of this circle is an important part of the circle because there's no unit if one of us is not here mm -hmm. so yeah. wow i mean I, i'm sure it must have helped um in a positive way that they were also loved by their other parent. <laughs> Absolutely. As well. You know what I mean? Um, because your children, of course, they're used to being around their mom and his was used to being around his dad and his mom. So blended in, I guess, like you said, they just didn't want to make sure they had a part in this dynamic as well. Yep. You know, that they yep. fit in. It's like, don't forget that you loved me before we got here. That's the thing. Tiny is like, okay, hey, I had all, all to myself before everybody else came along. So it was still about reassuring her just because somebody else is here doesn't mean that your love is getting diminished. You're still my girl. Like you still and always will be my girl. girl. <laughs> like it's not, doesn't go away because others are added into the mix. You were before, you are now, and you'll be forever more. Like, that doesn't change. We just have more love now mm -hmm. to expand out to. So. Wow, that is so awesome. Uh, one more, uh, one last thing I want to pull from your book, mm -hmm. two on page um, on 172 uh, about, it's, it's under the chapter Proud Family. Mm -hmm. And it says, um, there are keys to building a successful blended family, whether it is through marriage or you extend your family out like you did with additional brothers and sisters who will be with you for the rest of your life. The mistakes of yesterday cannot guide you into tomorrow. That is important that you said that. And, and, and can maybe you can kind of elaborate a little bit on that about 
the mistakes of the past because they really do um, can take a toll. <laughs> Absolutely. So in looking back over where my parents came from, right, that was very important to me to lay down that foundation of where it is that I was born into, <laughs> right? Um, because it was who I am. And making decisions, our choices really dictate who we are. Mm. And so if we make bad choices, we don't have to live with those choices forever. We can make new choices to go forth and do something differently, right? Mm -hmm. And so I watched throughout my life some of the choices that I made. And in doing that, I got to where it is I am. And so I don't want to give away the book. I'm going to need y'all to go and buy yes, the book, right? Yes, so yes. the choices that I made, and I'll, I'll throw this one out there very high level without really getting into the detail. The first love that I had was a superficial love. And I talked about that one. And I knew I was never going to marry them. And so now in the position that I sit in now, as a Christian woman, Right. I don't regret it for a lot of reasons because I have my daughter. But it was a choice that I made to be, you know, in a relationship with someone for so long, to have a child out of wedlock, to do all of these things that me of today would never agree with back then. But even still, I don't regret those choices and I don't necessarily want to change them all. Mm -hmm. Even the trauma and all of the things that I went through could have taken me in a different direction. But instead, I allowed them to be the thing that made me the overcomer that I am now rather than take me down a path of a woe is me lifestyle versus a look at me now <laughs> lifestyle, right? I wanted to bring out the positivity of strength and love and hope and forgiveness. I didn't want to be the one where I was like, wow, I really got beat down by life. Mm -hmm. And because I got beat down by life, I need y'all to understand that I'm just going to sit in all of this and, and just let, let, let me just sit in my woe because you saw what happened to me, right? You saw what I did. You saw the decisions that were, you know, made by me. We don't have to do that. So those those decisions, they don't have to dictate negativity. We can really choose to go to a positive place in our lives and let love and light be the thing that bring us to where we are now. And that that is what I really wanted to make the message be about. Let the choices bring you to a positive place. They don't have to be negative. They don't have to sit you into a dark place. That is so awesome. And uh, that, that was a blessing right there in itself because every we all go through something. Everybody has a story, I'm sure. But it's what you do or the choice you make after that story, you know, to allow yourself to come. In. And I'm sure that's where your faith also played in. <laughs> a, lot. a whole lot. A whole lot. <laughs> a whole lot. Yes. And, and as a matter of fact, as we wind down our conversation, I would ask you to uh, kind of we could end this on you giving hope to other uh, pe persons who may be in a blended family, who may be thinking about blending a family, um, you know, as to, you know, to look on it from a positive side and, and what a blessing it can be for, you know, for everyone. And um, oh, absolutely. let you say that some, some final, whatever the Lord puts on your heart and some final words. And, um, and, and then I'll let you, you know, actually close us out with prayer. So thank you. Absolutely. I forgot to mention too, because you were also a deaconess uh, <laughs> about to be elevated too in the Lord. Bless the Lord. <laughs> yes, I am. Yes, I am. I'm in 
deacon now um, and will be a uh, minister. <laughs> All's going well in October, be ordained to a minister. So, yes, I take that very, very seriously. I just bless and thank God because I'm so humbled that he allows me to do what it is that I do. And so my 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 hope and encouragement is when when you find yourself in a situation, and this, this is this is both sides of the coin. Blended family is not a bad word. <laughs> There are those who find themselves with step parents, stepchildren, and it's looked upon as being a almost devastating situation because when we hear step anything, it's usually in a bad light. Mm -hmm. And given my childhood and upbringing, yeah, it wasn't the most favorable situation uh, in the world, but there are so many beautiful beautiful people, dads, moms, siblings, that are so willing to step up. See, that's the step. That's the step up mm -hmm. to bring you into their families and into their folks. And so my encouragement today is don't be afraid to go out and date and find someone who already has children. You don't know, and I don't know what the circumstances may be that may be holding that one person back from going forth and dating. Uh, maybe you can't have children. Maybe you are don't want children, and so you don't want to get involved with someone who has children. Children are a beautiful gift from God. And so if you have enough love in your heart, you can become that bonus parent, that step parent, the one that steps up. And really build a life, a family unit, and create something wonderful. Where the word step doesn't even need to be in the vocabulary. Because see, the thing is, this is only for the purpose of conversation. My children are my children. That's it. I don't make a differentiation between his children and mine. They're our children. Because we're a family and we love them as our own. God gave them to us. We don't have any together as biologically goes, but they're ours because we are Mr. and Mrs. And so go, go create a unit, go and join with someone and pour out all of that love that you have in your heart because it will bless you tremendously to raise together beautiful human beings who then can see a good example and then go forth and do it again and do it again and do it again. Biological doesn't always necessarily mean mm -hmm. that it has to be family. I have wonderful siblings mm -hmm. that I share zero blood with that have treated me with more love and kindness mm. than some of my biological family has. Mm. And I bless and I thank God for each and every one of them who show up for me in ways that just move my heart to pure joy. And then I have biological who I love dearly and bless and thank God that we share parents and a womb, you know, that came where we came from that we share face, <laughs> you know, because of the love and support. And so the point is, family is what you make it. Make a decision that you're just going to love with the love of the Lord. And it will be beautiful because you made it beautiful. Because you made the choice to love someone unconditionally. Not because of who they were born to, but because you decided to give them the love of your heart. Father, we just bless you. We thank you. Thank you. Humbled and honored, Lord, that you will give me this charge. Thank you, Lord. To talk about who the family is, that you will allow me to be the one to showcase my life, Lord, the transparency, the ability, Lord, to be open and honest. Father, I ask that anyone that may be listening that finds themselves in a position, Lord, to be seeking family, Lord, no matter what their age may be, that they will find a family unit to be connected to. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. Father, we know that you work in all kinds of ways and that you can connect people from here, there, and everywhere, Lord. But we know that your family, your family, mm. is a family mm. of brothers and sisters, and we are all one body of Christ. Yes, Lord. And that this family of believers falls under the one great father of which you are. And so that there is no differentiation, Lord, other than these biological units that we are born into. Because we all belong to you, Lord. Thank you. And so I thank and bless you for that. Father, we just love you and honor you for who you are in our lives. Jesus. Blessing and thanking you, Father. Thank you. For Lord. opportunities. Jesus, thank you, Lord. For opportunities, Father. Mm -hmm. To showcase how love when exacted out in the right way, can grow and extend upon one another. Yes. Mm -hmm. Father, I ask that you will continue to use this platform to bless and reach as many that needs to hear and see what thus say of you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Continue to do good works through your daughter. Bless Mother Allen, Lord, and all that she does. Continue to use her for your good. And all things, Lord, continue to give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. Because you are my father. Because I humbly submit myself to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Wow. I tell you, this is this is wonderful closing it like this. And I just want to thank you again for being I here. I love to come here. <laughs> <laughs> and we love to have you too. And you know what? We're going to put up all the information as to where you can get Sonji's book, get an autograph copy yes. and um, and all of the, her information if you want to contact her. So, uh, and it'll be a blessing. Get the book, support her. It'll be a blessing. So thank you. until next time on The Well, we look for you every week, Thursday, 7.30 p.m. Not only on Facebook, not only on YouTube, but also on Spotify as well. So we yeah. thank you for being with us and we look forward to sharing another Thursday with you on the well next time. Until then, stay safe, stay well. God bless you. God bless. <laughs>